Got a problem? Remember the acronym KISS. Keep it simple, students. Hey, 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 welcome back. Glad you could make it as we travel on down that road to becoming primary problem-solving professionals. That sounded like an alliteration to me, but that's a whole nother subject. In any case, today we're going to explore another one of those eight problem-solving strategies. And today we're going to look at make it simpler. So quite often we have a compound or complex problem that needs to be solved. So when we have a complex, convoluted, or compound problem, another alliteration, hey, when we have such a problem, we want to break it down into simpler steps and then combine the steps to find the solution to the problem. Here, let's look at an example. All right, let's take a look at this problem. It says for homework, Clay had to count how many pets she had. This is going to be hard, she thought. I have so many pets. Clay has two cows, four chickens, three goats, two cats, and a dog named Quana. How many pets does Clay have? All right, Clay is a lucky girl, and we need to figure out what? What is the question asking us? How many pets she has? So let's organize the data. The problem is telling us that Clay has two cows, that there, four chickens, three goats, two cats, and a dog. So here we've created a list of our information, and now we need to start to solve our problem. But rather than tackle this whole problem at once, we're going to make it simpler, break it down into simple parts. So the first thing we're going to do is try is figure out how many cows and chickens Clay has. So Clay has two cows and four chickens. So I'm going to use the make a picture strategy. I will include a link below to that video to solve this problem. Two cows, four chickens, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, well, that's only part of our problem, but let's be organized because we have so many steps. We, don't, we need to keep track of what we're doing. So we've now counted for the cows and the chickens. Well, now let's see how many goats and cats Clay has. So the problem is telling us that Clay has three goats and two cats. So again, using the draw a picture strategy, I see that Clay has one, two, three, four, five goats and cats. Let me stay organized. We included the goats and we've included the cats. So we know that Clay has a total of six cows and chickens. We also know that she has a total of five goats and cats. So now let's total the cows, chickens, goats, and cats by taking the six and adding it to the five. And once again, we're going to use our make a picture strategy. I'll even use another strategy called counting on. Start with the six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven pets. But no, we're not done. Because we were so organized, we see that we did not include Quana. And you can't leave Quana out. So that means we need to take those eleven pets and add one to it. We don't need a strategy for that because one more than 11 is 12. And we've accounted for Quana. So Clay has 12 
pets total. Once again, a very lucky girl. You see the way we broke that problem into simpler steps and did one step at a time until we finally solved the problem? Well, that's called making it simpler. Here's another kind of a problem where the make it simpler strategy can come in handy. Here, let's check it out. So let's look at another kind of a problem where the make it simpler strategy can come in handy. The problem says, Ben went to feed the ducks at the pond near his home. When he got there, he counted five ducks. While he was feeding the ducks, he noticed that four ducks came to eat and three ducks had enough and flew away. How many ducks were at the pond when Ben left? So the first thing we're going to do, as always, is organize the data or the information. So the problem tells us that Ben went to feed the ducks, and when he got there, he saw five ducks. And while he was feeding the ducks, he noticed that four more ducks came. And as he continued, he noticed that three ducks, while he was there, flew away because they've had enough. So the problem is asking us to find out how many ducks were at the pond when Ben left. So we're going to break it down into parts, make it simpler, and we're going to again use the draw a picture strategy to help us solve the problem. So the first thing it's telling us is five ducks were at the pond when Ben came. So I'm going to use a five frame, five dots to represent the five ducks. And again, to keep things organized, I'm going to indicate that I've already dealt with those five ducks. The problem goes on then to tell us that four ducks in total came to join the party. All right, so it says we have five ducks to begin with, and four more ducks came to join the party. How many ducks are all together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ducks. And once again, to keep things organized, we've dealt with with these four. So far so good, but we're not yet done with the problem because it goes on to state that while Ben was feeding the ducks, three had enough and left. So let's deal with them now. So there's nine total, but three left. So once again, I'm going to use the make a picture strategy to help solve this subtraction problem. There are nine ducks and three left, so nine minus three. So I'll start with my 10 frame of nine, and I will X out the three that flew away. And now let's count to see how many ducks were still at the pond when Ben left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six ducks remained at the pond. Good job guys. Now let's try one on your own. Okay, so here's a problem for you to solve on your own. It says Kim, Pam, Talia, and Lucy went on a butterfly hunt during recess. They each spent recess tallying the number of butterflies they saw. They saw the following. Kim saw two butterflies. Pam saw four. Talia and Lucy each saw three. How many butterflies did the girls see? All right, guys, so take a shot at this. See if you can solve it on your own. Hit pause. And as always, I'll be here waiting for you when you're ready. And we'll see how you did. All right, welcome back. So let's tackle this problem together and see how you did. So once again, we need to organize the data. We have four girls, Kim, Pam, Talia, and Lucy, and they each went out looking for butterflies. And it tells us that Kim saw two butterflies, Pam saw four butterflies, Talia and Lucy each saw three butterflies. So that's a lot of people, a lot of numbers, and a lot of butterflies. 
So in order to solve this problem, we're going to use the make it simpler strategy along with the draw a picture strategy. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out how many butterflies Kim and Pam collected together. So it said Kim had two and Pam had four. So let's solve that part of the problem. Two plus four. Once again, I'm going to use the five frames as my picture. And I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. So far, I've accounted for Kim and Pam's butterflies. So now let's deal with Talia and Lucy. So Talia and Lucy each have three butterflies. So we're going to figure out between the two of them how many they had. Talia had three and Lucy had three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three plus three is just another way of making six. So they had six between them as well. So let's just show that we've accounted for them. We're not yet done because now we have to figure out how many are all together. So Kim and Pam had six, Talia and Lucy had six. So to get the solution to our problem, we have to figure out what six plus another six is. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Between the girls, they collected 12 butterflies. So how'd you do? All right, it's a good strategy. We combined it with other strategies to help us get to the solution. Good job, guys. So guys, let me ask you a question. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And sometimes when we're faced with complex math problems, we need to solve them one step at a time. And as always, thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.